All right, y'all. How are you doing? Look, I just got hit. Okay, the <laughs> I was trying to go live, and y'all, it was it just cut off. It cut off on me. So we're gonna start this over. I'm live in a couple of different places, so we're gonna make sure we share this out. But today, really quick, I, I said this was supposed to be quick. This is supposed to be quick. We're gonna talk about making some sacrifices. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown because. <laughs> Going back over all of that, going back over all of that. Um, but I just quickly wanted to come over and talk to you all about sacrificing. And let's see. Ooh, you know what? I did not test my mic. So I'm hoping that you all can hear me. I'm hoping you can hear me. Um, so I know my video is a little crazy, but I kind of like that little, little thing going on in the background there. So Let's see if I can. Let's give us a little bit more light. There we go. How's that? Do, 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 do. All right, anyway. So I wanted to come over and speak with you all just for a moment about sacrificing and making sure that you do something in stream, okay? We're almost in the second, we're almost done with the second quarter. Um, time is going by fast. And so it's time for us to get our act together, time for us to level up, time for us to reunite our finances. We got to do all of that. And so one of the things that I wanted to say um, was or just talk about, you know, some of the sacrifices that I made when just push came to shove. So one of them was having to move back home. Now, did I have to? No, but that was the quickest way that I was going to get out of debt. So as you guys know, or maybe some of you know that I am an educator, Rashida Roberts here, we're talking financial. I would say I'm an author, speaker, educator, and financial coach. And so that is, you know, educator is my first love, I guess I would say. Um, as far as, you know, what I do, but starting education is costly or it was costly for me because not only did I go to college and get the four year degree, but then, you know, I also went to alternative certification school because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. So I got my education um, certificate um, alternatively. And so I didn't pay up front. So I let I paid some up front and then I let them take the rest out based on my first year. And when I tell you it felt like they were digging my guts out. Um, oh, my gosh. Just oh, it was just so much money. I didn't have they were taking so much money. You know, you got to think about those things and think about how all of it is going to work, because I basically was I, I could not fund just the basic, right? And that first year when you are teaching, you spend so much money in your classroom. So after like when I started doing my taxes, I saw that I had spent about $5,000 in my classroom for the first year alone. That's not even talking about the subse subsequent, ugh, I can't even say the word. The years that follow, y'all know the word I'm talking about. Um, the years that follow, I couldn't even, I don't, it was several thousand dollars then. And so that tells me in my head, one, no boundaries. <laughs> I definitely didn't have boundaries for my finances then Two, you know, I mean, at the same time, there are things that you need as an educator that they weren't giving up back then. Like now the school that I'm at now, we get a lot more supplies, paper, everything. I'm astonished that it's even like that. So I'm, you know, that part saves a lot, you know, when you get pencils and things like that, and then you can use your money to embellish. But I didn't get all of that. I got a $25 certificate, maybe $50 as a first year teacher. And hey, go fuel your classroom, right? So $5,000 spent living on myself, living by myself in my apartment. Um, I was in my, well, I was in late 20s because I was 26. And then what else? What else? Um, 
Ooh. So anyway, the basic is I couldn't afford to do some basic things like even, you know, get groceries and gas was pretty high for me because I had to travel a pretty significant distance and go down the, we call the toll, one of the tollways. And so I was living off credit cards. I adopted me some babies. So I, I, one was named Discover. The other one was Visa, Lisa Visa. Okay. The other one was MasterCard, Max, and you know, and I was using those credit cards to supplement because what do we do when we can't pay the bills? We can't, you know, make ends meet. We're living paycheck to paycheck. When you're actually bouncing, you're going overboard or you're calling a friend and say, Hey, look, I had to call a friend a couple of times. I'm like, dude, can you just put $25 in my account? Can you put $50 in my account? Okay. Y'all know how it is. Sometimes, you know, you're out there. That's, that's what you have. Right. And so it was rough. And because I was in that predicament, I made sure at the end of that year, I couldn't take it. I mean, me and debt, we don't get along. But for some reason, I didn't, you know, over the years, I still didn't have the actual, the whole totality of mindset to actually stay out of debt. But during that time, I just knew that, hey, I got to get rid of this. So I moved home. I went to the extreme, you know, <laughs> who cares how grown I am? You know, who cares, you know, you know, all of that pride or whatever, I went home. I'm like, look, hey, I need to get rid of some debt. Can I move home? You know, da, da, da. And hey, the moms let me do it. So that was cool. And so the, one of the things that I did, and this was before I actually knew that I would even be coming into the finance space, was I got a notebook and I still have my little pink, pink journal back there where I wrote down all, all of my debt, all of them. And then what did I do after that? I crossed each one out as I, I worked it out. And so what I really like to do is when I plan on crushing debt, I write down everything. When I'm telling you everything, all of my debts, and I put them lowest, least to greatest, okay? And how much the amount is. And then I work out how much my payment is. I put it all away, uh, you know, across the board so I can see what I have to pay off, like what I'm going to be paying off first, what I'm going to be paying off second. How long is it going to take me out? Take me, take me to pay that off. It's going to take three months, four months, six months, you know, and then I pretty much have the actual number of how much I need to pay off in that year or how much I need to pay or, you know, or when they're going to actually be finished. I can tell you if it's going to be, oh man, this is going to take me 18 months. This is going to take me, you know, two years or whatever it is. Um, but I, I made sure that I went home that was something that I think is extreme that some people, you know, won't do. They have the pride, swallow that pride, you know, let's go to the stream, cohabitate if you need to, you know, um, move back home with your parents. Now, I don't suggest moving back into a toxic situation. Some stuff you're just going to have to work through, but we definitely can think about doing some extreme things. Okay. Think about, you know, how much you got to find money already in your zone. Okay. You got to have friends and, you know, you got to have a community of people that's going to help. If you don't have that community of people, where can you find money so that you can help you crush your debt? Okay. Where can you sacrifice? And for me, that sacrifice was my autonomy and moving back in and, you know, hey. And uh, since then, yeah, I mean, I, I wish I would have, I wish I could say, yeah, I stayed out of debt and I did great. And no, I didn't. Okay. So that's why the mindset is always important. That's why the mindset is always needed because otherwise we get ourselves stuck back in the same place. So where can you take advice? Can it be food? How about let's turn off the TV for the rest of the month of May? No TV for the month of May. Zero. Turn it off. How about get rid of your TV? Now, I haven't turned on TV in about two months. It's probably been two months. I have not turned on the TV. So, uh, but you know, I'm on social media, but I don't browse it as much as I need to. Okay, need, like this is a need, business for purposes. But I don't do a lot of socializing as far as, you know, lollygagging on it uh, as I used to. 
And so um, where can we cut? Okay, because then you can spend more time doing something else. Some of that could be a hobby that could get you some more money or, you know, you know, cut the music, cut, you know, you don't need those subscriptions. You don't need, you know, we don't need those subscriptions. Cut them, cut the cable, cut it. All right. Now I don't advise living without utilities like water. Okay. And light. <laughs> I don't advise live doing that because as you guys know, my pipe burst a, like a month ago, month and a half ago. Yeah, that was not fun. It was not fun uh, trying to, and not because I wanted to, but because it was hard finding um, plumbers. So anyway, so we got to make some sacrifice. Where can you make the sacrifice? What can you do to actually, you know, start finding some money and ditching the debt? Uh, maybe it might take up a part-time job. Maybe it's starting a business, a low-cost business. But I promise you there's probably some money already in your pocket somewhere that you that can help you crush debt. You just have to find it and you just have to sacrifice and you just have to follow through with crushing it, okay? Um, I know some gurus say, if you're in debt, don't even eat out. Ugh, ugh, that hurts my single soul. My single soul, I tell you, it hurts me because I can't, I don't know. Just depends on how fast you want to get out of there. But I do know eating out is one of my biggest expenses. And so that's why every now and then I will fast from eating out. <sighs> but it's so difficult. I don't have anybody to cook for. And uh, well, I do. I have people that I could cook for, but hey, look, we all grown. Do your thing. Do your thing. Um, but no, so that's it, y'all. That that's all I wanted to say today. You know, think about where you can sacrifice. Put it down. Go ahead and do it. Try it. You never know until you try. Um, but I'm pretty sure it will save you some money. Think about the areas that you can cut cost. All right, this is self care. Getting out of debt. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Oh, you need cut the cost cut the cost. You might find something new, something even more um, better. Okay. And remember saying I deserve this and I deserve that is not, that's not a form of self care when you're always doing it. It's toxic. Okay. It's called that you're numbing instead of actually facing up with the issues and problems that you have at hand. So we say I deserve too much in replace of self-caring. And so, yeah, don't get it twisted. So sometimes you just need to sacrifice, be obedient to your sacrifices, and then you can see the results. Don't sacrifice now so that you can live the way you want to later. Well, what if later never gets there? Hey, if later never gets there, then guess what? It just, it, it won't get, it never gets there. Like, I mean, but you still would have worked hard. And, you know, that's just, you know, nothing is promised to us. The, the, the next day is not promised to us, but that doesn't mean that we live life wildly without any plans or, or any dreams, okay? We can't all be wanderers of the world. You, you, you got to go in it. Sometimes we got to do something strategic, all right? And I want to see you win. If you're having issues with your debt, if you need help, trying to realign things, you know, get some tips, get some strategies, get a group of people and get around quality people that's going to help you hold you accountable and that you can go through things. Ah, I have something for you. Look, we have a boot camp coming up. Boot camp, boot camp from Reignite Your Finances Summit. We thought about, hey, we need to do a boot camp. And so we're going to be doing a boot camp. If you're interested, I want you to click on the link in the actual um, the description. Okay, click on the link, join us. Would love to see you, and let's talk about what's going to be at the boot camp. So it's going to be seven week boot camp, and this is going to be week one. We're going to work on foundations, which is your mindset. Okay, 
we're going to talk about talk about that some things that you need to think differently about and so i know you guys are just thinking of mindset feel good no it's going to be some action that you need to take um, even with the mindset because it takes a while to change the mindset it's not just you know you can't just say the words you got to do the words in order for you know things to actually uh, take place right and actually show up actualization okay it has to show up in your life then we're going to talk about minimizing well ways to increase your cash flow um the first one we're going to talk about is minimizing your taxes because for me i feel like that is one of the biggest ways and like a game changer if you structure your personal finances your business finances correctly your taxes can be a game changer OK, it's not immediate like you don't see that immediately, but in a yearly base, setting up everything right. You can see how that can actually help you by minimizing your taxes. And it is one of the strategies that the wealthy use. The wealthy do not want to put their money in the hands of the government and you shouldn't either as well. OK, so we're going to talk about minimizing your taxes. Week three ways to other ways to increase your cash flow. Okay. How can you increase your cash flow? I just told you about several things that you can do under sacrifice. Okay. Sacrifice is the name of the game. All right. Week four, tackling debt. Right. We're going to make sure that we're going to put all of our eggs out on display. How can we tackle our debt? Okay. Don't be afraid of it. Go look. Some of you guys have not even summed up your financial uh, summaries to see exactly where you are. I was in red when I started this journey. We have to look at what, where we were, okay? Where we are, where we were, all of that. All right. And week five, it's going to be emergency funds. Yay. All right. This is your offensive tackle is your emergency fund. And then that kind of gets us into budget one-on-one, but that's what we're going to talk about is emergency funds. How can you fund your emergency funds? And then week six. We're just going to hit budgets hard on week six. Okay. And by that time, by the end, you should definitely have your budget set up. You should be already minimizing your taxes. You should already have started the process of increasing your cash flow. Not started. You should be done. Okay. Cut where cutting needs to be done. We're not playing games. This is not about, you know, like you got to make drastic change. If you want some changes, you got to do something drastic. Okay. We're not trying to trickle and tiptoe because look, when you, when you winning, 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 people like fast results. Okay. Success. People like fast results. And so we want you to be successful. So you got to make cuts you got to make the cuts and then week seven is actually going to be bonus it's probably going to be multiple streams of income so we'll have some of our expert friends come in and talk to you um based on you know the surveys that we give out during the actual uh different weeks to see and script it based on that particular uh cohort and so if you're interested we're not going to be taking too many people we're going to reserve this for 30 people only, probably even less than that, because 30 people seems like a lot right now. So we'll be reserved for 30 people. So if you are interested, please go to bit.ly, oh, bit.ly, 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 um, I, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm looking at this comment, y'all. Uh, I, I don't understand. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Anyway, I got to delete <laughs> that comment. But if you are interested, go to bit.ly and it's R Y L <laughs> bootcamp, which stands for reignite your finances bootcamp. So R Y L <laughs> bootcamp. Oh my gosh. I should just leave that comment up just because I'm like, what? Oh my gosh, people. Anyway, so come on, <laughs> come on in and fill out the form. Let me run that banner <laughs> across. I'm sorry, y'all. That's, it's funny. It is hilarious. <laughs> but I'm going to run the, uh, 
run it across y'all so again that is bit.ly slash ryf for reignite your finances boot camp and if you were not at the summit oh my gosh it was so fire y'all y'all missed it you missed it you missed it missed it it was so good and so that is it y'all that's it um, i'm gonna put the the link up there run it through and so you all i hope y'all have a wonderful day hopefully if you're watching the replay hit the replay like share comment this post and yeah that's it that is it all right it's time to reignite our finances i hope everybody at our summit um are already taking the jewels and the tips and doing something different and so i can't wait to hear the testimonies 30 days from now i can't wait to hear the testimonies testimony 60 days from now because we're going to follow up with you all and so it was so great we have some wonderful speakers and so i just can't wait to continue on the journey that i'm on my debt-free journey and i can't wait to you know pour into other people but also to be poured into by so many others who are quality people and yep it's gonna be fantastic 2021 is not over it is just starting if your your year is just starting that's okay pick up the horse get on your get your saddle let's ride on out all together okay all righty so again Join the boot camp. If you're interested, just go to our form, complete it, bit.ly slash RYF boot camp. All righty. So it was good to see everyone. Look, I don't know if my music is going to play, but I'm going to see if it will. Uh, I'm going to see if it will play. And um, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Let's see. I don't know if this is going to play or not. Y'all have to tell me if you hear it. All right, I'm out of here. It's your girl, Rashida Robert Schlitt, Target Financial. This is Cash Flow Combo coming at you. Y'all have a wonderful day.